This is the Mono Price Mini Delta. The Mini Delta is the newest printer in the Mono Price Mini line. It's the Delta version of the classic Mini Select printer, and it shares a lot of the same features. This one has a 110 by 120 millimeter build volume, a heated bed, a color LCD display, auto Delta calibration, and the same hot end slash part cooling fan that the Mini Select has. I have been doing a lot of testing on this machine lately. We even took it with us to Murph and we printed on it while driving in the car. I do think I could complete a few more prints on it before I complete this review, but I have ran into one increasingly annoying snag. The build sheet that came on this printer is a pretty nice sheet and it sticks to prints really well, but it's also very thin. So I put a rip in it about four prints in and it's been really annoying ever since. I was doing my best to try to keep this sheet intact until I finished this review, but I just can't take it anymore. Luckily, I have purchased this sheet of Gecko Tech that I'm going to swap this sheet out with now. Let's scrape off the old one. We'll clean it up a bit. I'll cut my sheet down to size. Looks good. We got it stuck down good. All fixed. So my new sheet's on. I'm going to get back to printing. And I'll see you in a couple days. And now I'm back. So I've done a little more printing and I want to start this review with the things I really like about this machine. So the thing I find most useful on this machine is the auto level slash calibration feature that this machine has. You can activate this with the standard G29 command by putting it in your start G code. It does by default only probe three points, but you can use parameters to increase the amount of points and set your Z offset. When the cycle completes, it does provide a map of how things went. The calibration on this machine works by triggering switches that are underneath the build plate. Before you calibrate, you need to make sure that your hot end is clean, and you'll probably want to heat the bed and the hot end up before it starts the process. Also, you want to make sure that there's no filament or any other debris underneath the bed when you're trying to level, because that will interfere with the switches. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to remove the bed. You can just push these tabs over and lift it off, and you can clean underneath it. The screen's also pretty nice on this machine. There's not a whole lot of options available in the firmware, they have switched to these three click buttons rather than the wheel, but it seems to be pretty intuitive. Another great feature of this machine is how portable it is. It's pretty sturdy, it's made of mostly aluminum and plastic, but it has a handle on top. And with a spool holder on the back, you can just pick the whole thing up and carry it around as one unit. Also, it comes with a sealed power brick, that makes things a little handier. And it works pretty well with Octoprint. You do have to have an additional plug-in to make it connect successfully, but that's not a big issue. Now onto the things I really don't like about this machine. The first thing being this combined hot end slash part cooling fan that I've complained about on the other Monoprice printers. If it had a dedicated part fan, your prints would come out so much better. This one just doesn't provide enough cooling. The printer does have a heated bed, although it's not that consistent, and it takes a while to heat up, probably because this is only a 5 amp power supply. It does also offer Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi is almost worthless. It's the same module that's offered on the Select Mini, and it really doesn't work all that well. Here's a shot of what the internals and the main board looks like. If this isn't the same board that the Mini Select uses, it's very similar. They both use a 32-bit ARM processor. The firmware that runs on this main board is proprietary, but it does respond to most of the Marlin commands, like M600 filament change. But what we really want to know is how does this machine print? This was the first Benchy that was printed on this machine during the live stream. Outside of the string, it came out really well. Before I started tuning the slicer settings, I tried a few other test models. You can see this castle has a lot of stringing, but the detail is pretty good. Then I started to get the retraction dialed in to limit the stringing, and I tried to maximize the build volume. This is about as big of a model that you can print on this machine. And of course, I had to do a mini Moon City, and I think this is one of the best prints that I've done. All in all, this model came out really well. I even printed out some bed knobs from a CR-10. All in all, I've had pretty good luck with this machine. I did have one nozzle jam, but I just switched out the nozzle and everything went right back to normal. It's also a fairly quick machine. If you slice a Benchy at the top speed of 60 millimeters a second, it'll turn it out in an hour and 18 minutes. And that's not too bad. For the price of $160 US, it's a Delta, it's super portable, and it has automatic configuration, you pretty much can't go wrong here. So would I recommend this machine? You bet. If you can deal with a small build volume, it's very portable and inexpensive. It'd be a great printer to travel around with, 
Or if you just wanted to try out deltas and didn't want to spend a lot of money, you have a 3D printer that's pretty much ready to go right out of the box. I have not been in contact with the manufacturer on this review. All opinions expressed are my own, and this printer was bought with my own funds. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.